I mean, I think the most important thing that we do for the refugee community here uh, in the West Bank is that we provide them education and, and we work to help them reach their full human potential. I mean, I agree that the report is quite shocking, um, and I'm very happy that we didn't add the half million Palestine refugees that come to our schools every day. Our schools did open on time today, despite the financial constraints that the agency is facing. And, and it's good that the 500 odd thousand uh, refugees of Palestine, those children will attend school in our five fields of operation. And we aren't adding to what all, is already a, a very difficult time for refugees and their ability to access education. Mm -hmm. So what can be done to provide more of these refugee children access to education? It's, it's so important for them. I mean, I think it's not something certainly that one entity is able to solve. It takes a collective effort by all the UN uh, member states. Uh, as, as well as the uh, various agencies funded programs such as UNICEF and UNESCO and others. Um, but it's, you know, it's very important that education is the key to livelihoods and, and employment and economic development for all of these refugees. So it's very important that they, that we do work together to find a way for them to access education and ensure that they do reach their full human potential so they can have the same uh, benefits and rights that the rest of us do in terms of uh, of our future and our economic future in particular. Mm -hmm. You said the, uh, those UN-run schools for Palestinian children did open today on time uh, despite the funding cut. And I know that your agency has said that it will continue to support children in Palestine who go to school. But how can uh, UNRWA continue to support children without this funding? I mean, I think that you know, we, the, the funding challenge we face this year is really is quite unprecedented. Um, our, our commissioner general made the decision early on. We launched a campaign called Dignity is Priceless uh, to raise both attention but also funds globally. It's been you know, very successful, and we've raised $238 million thus far as, as part of that uh, endeavor. Uh, the challenge is that we're still short $123 million um, to continue our operations in addition to education. We also do health care and solid waste management and, and social services interventions for the refugee community. And we need to work to identify those funds. Uh, but despite these challenges, we do have enough funding to open school and get through September. Um, so it's important that the children aren't impacted and that we try to give them as normal a school year as possible. Uh, we were in Jala's own camp today, which is uh, outside of Ramallah, and we welcomed the 1,000 children that attend the schools there back to school. Uh, they were all very excited and very happy. And, as, as you would uh, expect from children as they as they come back to school. Mm -hmm. And now that school has opened on time and the children are in school and get an education, we continue to our efforts to fundraise and to make sure that we can continue our education and other very critical services to uh, to the refugee community after the end of September.